is I, Tantus Narvan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion on D20 Modern, the modern take on the third edition of Dungeons and Dragons. Well, where we last left off, we've been talking about the friends and foes that you can encounter over the course of your adventures, and we were talking about creatures. We're going to finish up some information about creatures and then start talking about supporting characters today. But let's finish with the creatures, and of course, starting with creature knowledge. The fact is that if you're in a world where supernatural creatures exist, it might be important, critically important, for you to know about them. It could mean the difference between life and death with you. When you encounter something and you know nothing about it, you're more than likely going to have difficulty combating against it, especially with creatures with unique and special abilities that you characters themselves may not have. Basically, to look into these creatures and not be prepared to face the knowledge of them, to understand what you are battling against, could be a danger that you may not want to face. Victory. Its chances will increase with knowledge. Now, the fact is, knowing about a creature, you're either knowing about that creature specifically or that type of creature, depending on what you can identify. This will be based upon the research skill. You will use the research skill and some time in order to research the things you've encountered and to learn more about them. You may have fought against that one or seen it basically briefly and may have either been able to escape from it or done something else, but you may want to find out more about it so that the next time you encounter it, you're ready for it and that you aren't caught off guard as much as you were when you first encountered it. It will take you 1d4 hours plus possibly an extra 1d4 acros extra, so 2d4 hours total, if the creature is unique. So just 1d4 if not unique. 2d4 if unique. The amount of knowledge gleaned is basically going to be determining by how much time you actually spent there and the success of your check. And then your game master will determine effectively what you have learned about this creature in the midst of your research. Now, an important part of creating these adventures is these creatures that you're going to encounter. Now, the very creatures you could use the basic statistics that are provided in the book or some other similar statistics. The fact is, in order to make it more interesting, you should customize it to a degree. Make it something different than the standard creature that players would be encountering. That way, they might learn about the standard creature, but this unique version of creature they would not be able to pick on, pick up on as much. You can do this in a number of ways. You can, of course, tweak the statistics of the creature you're having. You could come up with your own custom creatures using the basic rules that we sort of talked about at the beginning of the section here when we moved into talking about friends and foes. Those basic statistics are based on hit dice and such can easily help you build the basis, basis and start building off of the information about what a creature would have. You're constructing it very easily there. But this is not the true essence of when it comes to creating an interesting creature for your players to encounter. The fact is that many creatures, especially ones that are more on the supernatural side, will have defenses that may require something like magic to overcome. Your players might not have access to that. They might not have magic items or spellcasters which can take advantage of these ingrown weaknesses of these creatures. That's where another type of weakness comes in. You as the GM could choose from a list of weak... You as a GM could assign a weakness to this creature in order to make an opening for your players to exploit in order to defeat it. Of course, they would have to have researched this weakness or have by chance noticed upon it, but upon learning that, they could exploit it in order to help defeat these types of creatures, or particularly this type creature itself. Now, the book provides a great list of weaknesses. These weaknesses you could choose from, you could roll for them, you could be inspired by them. They're based upon specific locations, substances, and objects. Now how the creature interacts with them is going to be up to you as the GM and the exact proximity that will be needed to for the reaction to occur. But regardless, once you've decided to add in this weakness from the chart, or again, inspiration, whatever you're doing to figure it out, you're going to have to figure out how it reacts. And the book does list six sample reactions that a creature would have. These are the six basic reactions that a creature could have to this weakness. Addiction means that this creature, once it sees the substance, has to either imbibe it, has to absorb it some way, has to inhale it, 
has to ingest it. They need to get this substance into them no matter what. They have to focus on that above all else. So they are now distracted with this substance. Attraction means they have to move up to whatever this is as quickly as possible, as efficiently possible. They have to be there. You're attracting them to a location and having them drop everything else. Aversion means, well, they want to keep away from it. It's terrible to them. And they're like, oh gosh, they just want to stay away. They're going to do their best to keep away from it, to avoid it. Fascination means that it has to focus all its intention on whatever its weakness is. It has to basically stare at it, drop all its attacks. It has to basically observe what this is. It's fascinated by it. Fear, on the other hand, means it's afraid of whatever this substance is. It has to get away from it as fast as possible. It has to run away, escape, it has to flee. Harm means that this substance causes harm. It damages it. It in some way harms it. It could either be from sheer contact with this substance or just proximity to it, that it's near this, it's like as its flesh burns and melts off. So now that we've talked about the creatures, let's talk about supporting char supporting characters. We've talked about your contacts, your villains, those sort of big ticket NPCs. But guess what? There's a whole cast of minor bit players that are going to be out there that your players are more than likely going to interact with. Now, these aren't necessarily your opponents. These aren't necessarily your friends. These are just people that you might encounter along the way. All with their own skills, all with their own goals. They're just living their own lives, and your players' interactions with them will more than likely not be the focus of the story, but will help drive the story along. The encounters with them will be parts of the story as you have going. And these people could additionally be, you know, simple allies that help them out in some simple manner, or they could be the thugs that your villain uses. They could also be the prey of your villains, people that your villains are going to take advantage of and either do bad things to or abuse. So you can see the bit roles take a lot of forms. They could be in some way related to the antagonist, related to what the antagonist is doing, or just there. There to help push the story in certain directions. They can help or hinder your players. Now, these supporting characters are based upon the six basic classes. They're going to have some of your own basic statistics. They'll have an occupation, they'll have skills, they'll have feats. They will have the ability to gain levels and advance their own basic statistics, but they will have random ability scores, they will have random hit points, they will have no action points, they will have no class abilities. And none of these basic supporting characters can take an advanced class. But that's it for today. So I first finished up my discussion on creatures for now. I talked about identifying creatures, researching them, learning their weaknesses and abilities so that you can better counteract them. Then of course I talked about customizing your own creatures, and in particular, weaknesses to creatures. Because adding in a weakness that maybe this creature over there, it hates water. It's kind of a cliche weakness, but yeah, maybe it hates water for some reason. So it avoids it. It's like, you know, that it large bodies of water, keep it away. Hey, guess what? You can hang out in your pool and keep it away. <laughs> it's kind of a silly kind of thing, but you can come up with some kind of plan that that will work for. So you can see how weaknesses can evolve the adventure and make it more interesting, dynamic, that maybe it's not the basic gunfight, uh, the OK Corral, so to say, that you're not fighting it out with sheer weapons back and forth. There might be a little bit of that, but adding something that has a particular weakness that's ex exploitable and adds a interesting role-playing aspect to everything here is fun. Then I talked about supporting characters just a little bit. I started discussing them. I discussed how to build the supporting characters, of course, that they will be based upon the basic classes, but I talked about their role in your game, because they take a lot of roles, actually. They could be, of course, just simple goons, or just people working in a town. They could be anything in between. There are so many options for the supporting characters. They're not as important as anything else. They're not your major allies that might join you in the fight. They're not your big villains that are going to be fighting you. Because these are going to be the important characters that are going to be flanking you and driving the story. This is all the little people around you which will be involved in the story of itself. 
In the next episode, we're going to continue talking about supporting characters, though, because there's some information about them we do want to handle before moving on. But if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It's just for the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon, link description below. There's some great rewards there. It helps to grow and improve the channel and the empire. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.